Let's do some movies and money now with film critic Eric Childress on the scene for us. And Eric, the new comedy from Judd Apatow, Bros, disappointed at the box office. That movie grossed just $4.8 million. So what happens next? What can you tell us about the current state of comedy? And do you see film studios potentially shying away from funny films? Well, let's get very specific, Angie. There are a lot of movies that make people laugh. But let's not look at family comedies or special effects enhanced comedies, but good old fashioned people movies. Now, going back 10 years, I could find at least six original comedies from 2013 to 2016 that gross at least 50 million at the box office. In 2013 alone, there were at least four that grossed over 100 million. Then in 2017, the only original comedy to do that was Girls Trip. Now, both Pitch Perfect 3 and Daddy's Home 2 did as well. But the next wholly original comedy on that list was Snatched with Amy Schumer and Goldie Hawn, which grossed only $45 million. Now, did everyone declare the comedy dead then? No, because in 2018, there were again, depending on your genre classifications, another six comedies to gross over $50 million, including Game Night and mega-hit Crazy Rich Asians. Now, 2019 slowed again with the Judd Apatow produced Good Boys grossing $83 million. Then we all know what happened in 2020. 2021 became more dedicated to surefire blockbusters to get theaters back on their feet, while films like Free Guy, Jungle Cruise, and Ghostbusters Afterlife all did well. Now, this year so far has been The Lost City with Sandra Bullock and the delayed return of Jackass Forever. Lack of quantity does not suggest audiences are done with comedies in theaters, especially when the quality being released elsewhere is not worth writing much from our couches either. Make a great comedy people want to see or hear is really great, and theaters will see their auditoriums filled with laughter again. This weekend, there's a new comedy, Amsterdam, and a film for families about a singing crocodile. Here's a clip of Lyle Lyle Crocodile. This is my crocodile, Lyle. Please take good care of him. Oh. Josh, time to wake up. Come on. He's not dangerous. He's a crocodile. He's just lonely like me. Hey, you wake yet? He can't talk, but he can sing. Eric, which film is likely to come out on top this weekend? Well, it probably won't help my theory that Amsterdam, the new film of Christian Bale and Margot Robbie, likely will not win the box office this weekend. Now, David O. Russell has a history of successes, including the comedy Silver Linings Playbook in 2012, and even American Hustle in 2013, both of which grossed over $100 million. Now, the based on a true story comedic mystery Amsterdam is drawing some of the weakest reviews of Russell's career, and the fact that the studio moved it up from November to this weekend and not debuting it in any festivals was essentially a sign that it was not going to be an awards player. I think its big cast and premise could pull in a number around 11 to 12 million, but it's families that should give Lyle Lyle Crocodile the top spot this weekend. The new adaptation of the 1965 children's book has Sean Mendez as the voice of the friendly singing crocodile, and just by default, this will give parents something new to take their kids to. Remember, there has not been an animated or family film released in theaters since the DC League of Super Pets back at the end of July. Thank you, Eric. Always nice to see some originals on the big screen. Thank you, Angie. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.